infamous Kellogg brothers. That's Jack. My late husband. It, it was taken right after Joshua was born. Thomas told me there was an accident. I'm so sorry. Jack was a great guy. Great father. You must miss him very much. Only every day. Martial arts experience. Nope. No? I do. <laughs> Come. Let us demonstrate. Someone's missing. Miss Cooper, ship security. She'll know where he is. Why did Jeffrey take you there? Okay, move. There's a man here in the corridor with me. He has a gun. We're coming in. Place your weapon on the floor in plain sight and stand with your hands above your head. We're coming in, Vince. Please cooperate. I can't do it in these. of 180. I need an immediate firing solution. Tubes 1 and 2. Come <laughs> on. 
ever tell everyone about your riotous trip to the men's club last week? It wouldn't be a men's club now if the women knew all, would it? Mm. Oh. So how come Natalie knows? I was with him at the doctor when he had to appear. What on earth happened? I prefer to keep it private. <laughs> well, he was in... Philippa, can you uh, top up everybody's glass, please? So he was in the sauna. Philippa? As I was saying... So who was he in the sauna with? Anyone I'd know? As a matter of fact... Can you fact. pass me the butter, please? Thank you. Uh -huh. Sorry, what was I saying? I don't honestly know, my sweetheart. Oh, this is absolutely divine. Our chef never ceases to impress. David's a good cook too, aren't you, darling? I can honestly say I'm a whiz in and around the kitchen. <laughs> How are the kiddies, Patrick? Fine, thank you. Good. Your attention again, please. Um, we can't forget the manager who soon enough became a member of the family and proved himself a real go-getter. Jack Forrest. Jack. 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 Speech. 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 Haven't you heard enough of me yet? No. no. You signed the paychecks. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Come on, David, you've made your point. Wake up. Wake up! Wake up, you bastard! They can't do this anymore! Natalie! He can't hear you! Wake up! Probably just fell. Why don't you go get Joe, and we'll put him back in bed. He's sleeping. Then maybe we should do something to get your mind off this for a little while. No, thanks, but I should stay with David. He's, um, he's been sick and he's having headaches. It sounds like he's suffering the effects of bacchanalia. What's that? It's a festival of drunken revelry. I think he's gonna be all right. A few hours sleep. Yeah. Listen, my tennis partner canceled, called in sick. Can I interest you in an old-fashioned bike ride? Oh, what, pretend I actually have a real life? Mm. You know what I would love to? Just give me a moment to change. I'll meet you out front. More research? No, I'm catching up on some leisurely reading for a change. I deserve a break, don't I? Sure, it's who you spend it with that concerns me. David, I would really just like to have a quiet read for a change. Just tell me where you were all day. Well, I had a day off. And on the seventh day, she rested. You remember that one? What are you talking about? Please, can I just have some peace? Sure, just tell me where you were all day. Out! With Jack? I seem to remember that you were unconscious for 12 hours. Sitting around watching a corpse all day was not my idea of fun. Oh, and I bet you couldn't wait to just get out of here. I am really concerned at your distorted perceptions. It's other people's perceptions that worry me. It's like you've invented this fantasy world and you've got me playing someone else entirely. Look, what happened to me is very real, and if you can't handle it... The Lord knows I've tried, but all of my efforts seem to be in vain. And so Jack just happens to be there. How convenient. Today, Jack made me feel special. He made me smile, he made me laugh, but he respected me. You don't need legs for that. I'm so over yourself. And what's that supposed to mean? Our 
work it out. And make it quick. I would rather hang myself, you low-life piece of shit. One, <laughs> one step at a time. So, did you know your husband was a lying, murderous scoundrel before you married him? Hmm? <laughs> Go to hell. I just call him as I see him, Mrs. Turner. He nearly pulled off the whole gig, too. It's pretty smooth with the arsenic and the lime. But I'm afraid I just wasn't quite as thirsty as poor old Jack. Rest in peace. If you're looking for the money, you're wasting your time. It's long gone. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think so, Mrs. Turner. See, your husband made a very large withdrawal a couple of days ago. A lot of cash. Planning a trip. Well, David's gonna be here any minute. Why don't you ask him? I have no idea what you're talking about. I wouldn't be too sure of his arrival. What have you done with him, you sick fuck? Don't worry. I'll make sure you're both reunited just as soon as I'm reunited with a certain seven digits. Oh, come on, Mrs. Turner, it's not a trick question. Show me where the money is so I don't have to carry you and your friends out of here in body bags. No, oh, I am so sorry to inconvenience you. Just what is the selection criteria for a job like yours? Small balls, low IQ, oh, and the questionable ability to be able to beat a woman to a pulp. No. <laughs> the ability to beat women with smart fucking mouths to a pulp. Now. <laughs> Where's the goddamn money? <sighs> Gambling certainly has its risks, doesn't it? <laughs> See, at first, I wouldn't have thought you were the gambling type. Obviously, I was wrong. Because you insist on taking the biggest gamble of them all. Myself, I enjoy a risk. It's the best part of the game. What you're going to see now is just a rough cut. It's still a work in progress. I've got lots more footage that I've filmed here that I'm going to add. But I'm sure all of you are going to get a very big kick out of what you see, no matter what we decide to call it. Oh, and I wanted to thank Lucy and Harold and Lou for your wonderful home movies. Okay, so enjoy. Thank you. Ramsey Street, Erinsborough, Australia. <laughs> the blank suburban canvas okay. on which I lived a large part of my life. The street I'd forgotten about until I was approached to do this film. Hey! What did this place mean to me? What did I learn? I couldn't easily answer these questions myself. So, I started asking around. I was obsessed with climbing any corporate ladder people could throw at me, my own fashion boutique. Oh, and I'm still in Darwin managing Lasseter's. 